I told you this was going to be strong stuff, but it's the truth. Now let's talk about the synagogue of Satan just for a few moments. Babylon in the second angel's message is the same as the synagogue of Satan in the message of the church of Philadelphia. Do you see that? Now, Revelation 3 verse 9 says this, Indeed I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie, indeed I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. So there's a group that are called the synagogue of Satan and they say they're Jews but they're not. Now is this talking about literal Jews? Listen, this is the contradictory aspect of theologians like Hal Lindsey. See Hal Lindsey says there's the church age and then there's the age for the Jews after the rapture. He says the messages to the churches apply to the church before the rapture. But everything else starting with Revelation 4 all the way through the end applies to the literal Jews after the rapture. Now if that's true and by the way he says that you're supposed to take everything from Revelation 4 on literally but you're supposed to take what's in the churches symbolically let me ask you why in the third church would you have a reference to Balaam? is that literal Balaam? oh no no that's a symbolic Balaam ah uh, in the fourth church you have a reference to Jezebel is that literal Jezebel? no no that's symbolic Jezebel so what type of biblical gymnastics can you use to say that with the churches Jewish terminology is to be understood symbolically whereas in the later part of the revelation is, is to be understood literally are you understanding my point? now notice what a Jew is according to scripture these individuals who say they are Jews but are not but they lie notice Romans 2 28 and 29 we must go through this quickly Romans chapter 2 and verses 28 and 29 here the apostle Paul explains what a Jew is he says for he is not a Jew who is one outwardly nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh but he is a Jew who is one what? inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in other words a converted heart converted to whom? to Jesus, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. Let me ask you, what is a Jew according to the definition of the Apostle Paul? A Jew is an individual who has been converted to Jesus, and who has received the Holy Spirit, it says here. So in the church of Philadelphia, who are those who say Jew, that they are Jews, and they are not Jews? They must claim to be what? they must claim to be Christians and are not Christians even though they claim to be Christians because they're bowed before the throne are you with me or not? now notice Romans 9 verses 6 through 8 also on the definition of what a Jew is Romans 9 verses 6 through 8 here the apostle Paul says but it is not that the word of God has taken no effect for they are not all Israel who are of Israel let me ask you are all Israelites Israelites? not according to this nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham are all the seed of Abraham really seed of Abraham? no, Jesus said to the seed of Abraham you are of your father the devil that's strong stuff but in Isaac your seed shall be called that is those who are the children of the flesh these are not the children of God but the children of the promise are counted as the seed what does it mean to be a Jew? what does it mean to be an Israelite? it means to be linked with whom? with Jesus Christ so in the church of Philadelphia the synagogue of Satan those who claim to be Jews but are not Jews are individuals who claim to be Christians but are not really Christians they are counterfeit Christians is this point clear? notice also Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 on the definition of what a Jew is according to the New Testament it says there, and if you are Christ's then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise who are the seed of Abraham? who are truly Jews or Israelites? those who are whose? Christ's so in the church of Philadelphia are there individuals who claim to be Christ's but really they lie and are not Christ's yes 
Absolutely. And why are they the synagogue of Satan? Why are they Babylon? Because they refuse to what? They refuse to enter with Jesus into the most holy place to understand the distinctive truths that God's people need in order to remain firm in these last days. Now allow me to read you one statement from Ellen White on what the synagogue of Satan is. This is Testimonies to Ministers, page 16. She says this, Satan has a large confederacy, his church. Christ calls them the synagogue of Satan because the members are the children of sin. Why are they the children of sin? See if you don't go into the most holy place, sin loses its seriousness because the law is in the most holy. The importance of the Sabbath loses its importance. The importance of health, living healthfully and feeding your mind with spiritual things loses its importance. The state of the dead loses its importance. The idea that we're in the judgment and we need to prepare a character for heaven loses its importance because you're in the wrong apartment. Jesus has gone to be some other place and he has distinctive truths for these last days. She continues saying, the members of Satan's church have been constantly working to cast off the divine law and confuse the distinction between good and evil. Satan is working with great power in and through the children of disobedience to exalt treason and apostasy as truth and loyalty. Do you catch that? He's working to what? In the children of disobedience to exalt treason and apostasy as truth and loyalty. Is this uh, claiming to be a Jew and not being one, but lying? Oh, oh yes. She continues saying, and at this time the power of his satanic inspiration is moving the living agencies to carry out the great rebellion against God that commenced in heaven. Now we can understand why the Christian world is in the condition that it is in. In Revelation 14 and verse 8, the equivalent of the synagogue of Satan is spoken of as Babylon. And by the way, do you know what Babylon is? It's composed of three parts. The dragon, which are the civil powers of the world. The beast, which is the Roman Catholic papacy. And the image to the beast, which is apostate Protestantism. Those are the ones who stayed bowed before the throne. And those are the ones that Adventists want to copy now in their methods of growing churches. Hmm. I'll come back to that a little bit later. Do you think it's safe to adopt the methods from systems that have been pronounced Babylon or the synagogue of Satan? Have mercy, folks. We need to reevaluate what we're doing in our worship services. We have to take another look at this. Notice Revelation 14, verse 8. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Instead of the first angel's message, which leads into the most holy place, what does she give to the nations? She gives to the nations her wine, which is false doctrines, counterfeit doctrines. And Ellen White identifies them as the idea that the law of God is no longer binding, the idea that the Sabbath is really Sunday, the idea that there's an everlasting burning hell, and like and kindred errors, she says, are the wine of Babylon. Just the opposite of the first angel's message. By the way, do you know that Revelation 18 repeats this second angel's message, but it adds some details? Notice Revelation 18, verses 1 and 2. This is really chilling and sobering. It says there, After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. By the way, this is the message that the final Philadelphian church is going to give. The faithful remnant. And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen. What is Babylon? Revelation 16 verse 13 says that Babylon is the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The civil powers of the world, the Roman Catholic papacy, and the Protestant denominations. Babylon the great is fallen. Is fallen. And now notice this. And has become a dwelling place of demons. Is spiritualism trying to creep into the Adventist church? How can it creep in? By trying to shut the door to the most holy place and open the door to the holy. 